everybody. We are so excited to go after the presence of God with you today. Before we jump in, I've had this, this word stirring in my spirit, and I just want to release it over us. The word is heaven is hungry. Heaven is hungry. Hungry to invade earth. Hungry to invade your life and mine. Heaven is hungry to invade the relationships that each of us have. And so today, as we make space through this extended time of worship, I'm here to tell you that there is grace available. It will be easy for you to feel what God is feeling, to hear what heaven is saying, and out of that place of encounter, to respond rightly. And that's for everyone. I felt something strongly on children. And so if you have young ones in your home with you right now as you're watching, as you're listening, I want to invite you to let them go and to grab some paper, maybe something to, to color with or to draw with, because we're going to facilitate their encounters with God today. As we go after the Lord in worship and we listen to what heaven is saying and respond with prophetic prayer and declaration, we want to, I feel like heaven's saying, we want to make it easy for the children to, to draw out their pictures and record what, what God was saying to them during this time. And then as a family, you can dive into that together when this is all through. So because I want to give time for them to be able to go grab that, I'm just going to pray real quick before we get started. And because it's Pentecost Sunday, I'm going to read from Acts chapter 1. Having rose from the dead, Jesus appeared to his disciples over a 40-day period. During these encounters, he taught them many truths of God's kingdom. Before ascending into heaven, he told them, Wait in Jerusalem until you receive the gift the Father has promised. For John baptized you in water. But in a few days, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus, you told us to wait. You knew times were changing and that the Father was doing a new thing on the earth. The things, words that had long been prophesied, they were about to manifest. You knew your disciples were facing many unknowns, but they had this. They had their history together with you, Jesus. That mixed with the promise of Holy Spirit, that would be enough. Ha, ah, that would be enough. So Holy Spirit, on this Pentecost Sunday, we recognize that you are already here. You are right where we are, in this room, in the rooms of all that are, that are engaging with us right now, but we invite you to take us deeper. Anything that's hindered us, anything that has ever hindered us from the fullness that God made us to experience, we invite your power and we invite your love into those places right now. And together, as a spiritual family, we will tarry in your presence, Jesus. We're here to meet with you. Come. Come and have your way. Come and have your way. Yeah. 
of the pouring out of your Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and today. God, you're just looking for willing vessels and our answer is here we are. God, here we are. Would you pour out that Spirit again? Holy Spirit, we're available and we thank you. We thank you for a promise fulfilled in Jesus' name that he said, it's better that I go. It's better that I go. And, and it's sometimes hard to imagine what's better than Jesus but it's, it's Him present and alive inside of each one of us without measure, without limit. And we say, come, fall afresh this morning.
God, I ask of you that in the same way that thunder and lightning precedes rain, God, that we would have discerning hearts and in a spirit of discernment, God, to see the swirl and even the darkness, God, in the culture and the climate around us, God. And I pray that joy and hope, would God, would rise up on the inside of us, God, to, to claim the promise of coming rain, God, that, 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 that what looks like a storm is just proceeding and outpouring, God, an outpouring of your spirit, God. That's the promise, God, that we're declaring this morning. God, that we prophesy even this morning. God, in the face of what looks like even destruction and conflict, God, and brokenness, God, we pray an outpouring of your promise and your spirit, God, that comes to reconcile, God, that comes to heal and bring wholeness, God, that it is going to rain. That's your promise and that we are coming into agreement with it. Thank you, Jesus, for the promise of, of your rain, of your outpouring, God.
God, we sit here in this place, in the midst of your presence, and we remember, we remember that you are the one from the beginning that set the fire on the altar. You are the one, this was your idea, and your only directive to us in regards to the fire was that as the priesthood, we should fan the flame, that we should never let it die down. So as we continue in this place of worship, God, we just we just invite, again, everyone who's, who's engaging with us, everyone, just in your own way, start to fan that fire, that inner flame of the presence of God that lives big on the inside of you. No matter where you are, no matter what you've been dealing with, God is on the inside. And we're here together as a family just to help make it easy, to fan the flame. We will be known. We will be known in this hour as a people that burn from the inside out, that our passion for the presence of Jesus, the fame of Jesus in the nations of the earth, he will be made known by the way we love and we love passionately. So come again. Well, let's just go back into that. Just come again, Holy Spirit. We enter in and we say, burn like a fire. Burn like a fire.
all the believers were in fellowship as one body, and they shared with one another whatever they had. Daily they met together in the temple courts and in one another's homes to celebrate communion. We remember you, Jesus. They shared meals together and joyful hearts and tender humility. They were continually filled with praise to God, enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were coming and some life. Jesus, you are alive. You are living in us. Holy Spirit, you are the answer to Jesus' prayer for unity. You are the evidence. You, Holy Spirit, are the evidence of unity. It wasn't only then, it's now. You are now. Your kingdom come, your will be done is now. On earth as it is in heaven, now. We praise you, God. We lay down our old flames, God, and we carry our new flames today. More of you, Holy Spirit. More of you. We praise you, Jesus. We lift you high. You are worthy. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Fall down, glory. Here you are.
Wow, I just love the presence of God. There's nothing like it. As we conclude our time together, I just want you to engage with me for just a few minutes as I talk to you about something very important and it's the subject of the baptism of the Holy Spirit because I want us as we conclude all the beautiful things that have taken place this morning, I want us to go to this space in our hearts today. And I want to reference Acts chapter 2 verse 1. It's a scripture that we've probably read a million times, but it says, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting in one place. One place, that phrase right there, some translations would say one accord. It, 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 it literally means this, and I want you to catch this because this is very important. It means unanimously with one mind or agreement of all. It's, it's literally unity without uniformity which is so profound and so beautiful on so many levels. And I think oftentimes when we think of the church being a power source in the earth to literally bring transformation uh, to the lives of other people, we think outside of this context of unity and focus on the gifts themselves. And what I wanna submit as we posture our hearts together today that the flow of the gifts, or at least the flow of these grace gifts from heaven through this beautiful baptism in the love of God comes out of a place where we are unanimously of one mind and in agreement as all. Unity without uniformity. I want you to think about the days of Jesus leading up to this place this day of Pentecost, which we're celebrating today, where John the Baptist was baptizing believers in water, where they were learning and understanding that they were dead to self and alive to Christ and in union with God because of this, and even more profound, in union with each other. The baptism isn't only into Jesus in water, but it's into one another as well. And then on the Last Supper, Jesus broke bread with them, teaching them about this other sacrament, two sacraments, baptism and communion. And it was to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood. It was, it was really doing this often, as he mentioned, in remembrance of him, remembrance of his accomplished work, which was going to come not too far hence from that night, that beautiful night in the Last Supper. Because Jesus was getting these 120 positioned properly in the upper room where they had unanimously come in to this same belief about Jesus, what he had accomplished, and they were all in agreement. Now listen to me, I don't know if I've ever seen a time in my lifetime where there's been so much disunity, so much disagreement, and what better day then on the day of Pentecost being celebrated now 2,020 years later for us to come out of this time of prayer as we go into this next season as a harbor community and come into a place of unified agreement, even if it's not unanimity. Unity for what as we close this? unity to understand the times that we're living in, just like the sons of Issachar, and see that this is not the end, but a beginning to a brand new future. There's nations yet to be reached. There's the, there's the gospel of the kingdom, you know, being preached in all the world, which we haven't seen yet, like heaven come, like literally get foretastes of that in every nation on the planet. These are still things that need to happen. Understand, secondly, that this is a time that God has given us a moment to repent and change the way we think by getting back to the simple basics of loving God in the place of prayer, loving each other in simple, small gatherings around a dinner table, maybe in large gatherings, coming truly united, not just showing up to another church service, but, but celebrating the work that God's doing in our midst in the place of prayer, in our midst in the place of loving one another around a dinner table. I'm getting really vulnerable here, but I believe that the church in America has been pummeled by the pressure 
to perform. Laden by the endless demands of consumer-driven disciples that were put into that posture by consumer-driven leaders that are swept up by worldly ambition. And I'm saying this in a general sense. I'm not throwing any stones. I'm a part of this reality called the Big C Church, which I love. But what it does is it drives us in a general sense to take on more than necessary. Question, how can we fill, be filled with the Holy Spirit in a world that waits for no one? In that place they were waiting. Today, in our times together, we should be waiting on God. Bernard of Clairvaux said this as I wrap this up. He says, the Spirit is lavish in His blessings, both for those receiving the gifts and for their neighbors. Any man or woman who perceives that he is endowed with an exterior grace enabling him or her to influence others can truly say of the Lord, your name is oil poured out of me. He continues by saying, however, we often squander and lose what is meant to be our own. If before we are totally permeated by the infusion of the Holy Spirit by rashly proceeding to pour out of our unfilled self upon others without first finding satisfaction in the Lord. Listen to me, Harbor family. It is time for us to minister to the Lord and allow the Lord to minister to us. He continues and says, any good we do will drain us or worse even reveal, or worse reveal itself to be nothing more than worldly ambition. Those who are wise will see their life as more of a reservoir than a canal. A canal simultaneously pours out what it receives, but a reservoir retain, retains the water until it is filled, and then it discharges the overflow without loss to itself. Wow. What does being filled look like as we ask God to come, maybe for the first time, and baptize us in His Spirit? Maybe you need to be being filled as Ephesians says through the mouth of Paul, be filled again, a constant infilling. It looks like this, it looks like boldness, where fear doesn't rule and control our life. It looks like joy, where there's no more depression overtaking our frames. It looks like prophecy, where we're aligned in speaking what God is saying. It looks like healing out of our wholeness, healing others. And it looks like tongue speech, unhindered, un, you know, mixed communication with God. Super simple, so profound, but such a gift. And I want to ask you, right where you're at, to just sit before the Lord right here and wait, seek, and ask. In fact, he says, if you ask me for bread, I'm not going to give you a stone. I'm a good father who gives good gifts to his children. Could you pray with me today? Let's be filled with the Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost. We're not waiting for another Pentecost. It's already come. The access is here. Let's open up our hearts to be filled like never before, to overflowing, like Bernard of Clairvaux says. We ask you, Holy Spirit, as you've already made this a reality for us, a possibility for all of your children. Would you come on this day, this glorious day of, that marks the birthing of the church? And would you meet with us in our homes, with our families? Maybe we're gathered with a few friends. May we just drown out everything and anyone and just fix our gaze upon you. In fact, we just minister to you, Lord. We minister out of the overflow of our hearts. We, we say we love you, Jesus. We, we say you are worthy beyond description. And we ask 
that because of your Son, that, that, oh Father, that the heavens have already been opened and we have access to all and every blessing that flows from your hands. And would you come and would you endow us with a super extraordinary grace today? Joy, boldness, prophecy, healing, tongue, speech. Come, oh God, we ask you. We love you, Lord. We love you. God bless you, church. Have an amazing, amazing rest of your day.